This is going to be a very detailed video showing how to go deep inside a PS3 Slim so you can replace the thermal paste on the CPU and GPU and you can change the battery if needed. And you can also remove any dust that has accumulated on the inside. I'll then show you how to reassemble everything. I'll be doing this to a model CECH3001A. The inside of your PS3 Slim may differ slightly from what I'm about to show you, so keep that in mind. Also bear in mind that that there's risk involved in taking apart any game system. I'll be giving you tips on how to do things carefully, but the level of risk will never be zero. You could, for instance, drop a screwdriver onto the main board and break something. Place the system face down on a soft surface and remove all the screws indicated on the screen. Some are under the pads, but only three of the four pads. And some are under these little plastic doors. You just have to pry them open with a tiny flathead screwdriver. One of those doors is under the warranty tape, so bear that in mind. One screw is under a larger door. Don't pry that door off. You just lift it up and turn it like so. Once the screw is out from beneath it, close the door back so it doesn't get snagged on something. All the screws on the back of the system take a Phillips head screwdriver, except for these four, which require a Torx security bit, size T8. As you're doing this, it's important to keep your screws organized. We already have encountered three different types of screws, and we have many more to go. Also, I get asked all the time what to do if a screw is stuck and doesn't turn. I recommend putting one drop of alcohol on it, then clean out any dirt that's around the screw, and also tap the screw with the screwdriver, and that might loosen it up. Now you need to remove the hard drive. There's a little plastic cover that slides off easily by pushing it to the right. Then grab the handlebars and pull the drive out. Now remove the top of the system, pry the right side, and flip it up like you're opening a book. Next you'll have to remove the power supply, remove the two screws holding it, disconnect the cable connector right here, it has a lever on it, push in on that lever as you pull it up. Nearby is another cable connector that we need to disconnect. This one doesn't have a lever, so you either have to stick some pliers or tweezers down in there and pull the connector up. But there's not going to be much to grab onto and it's very recessed, so I'm going to choose to disconnect it by pulling all three wires straight up with my fingers. This one wasn't very tight and it came right out. On the other side, there's a connector that connects in two places. Once again, I'm going to just pull up on the wires, but you are welcome to use tweezers or pliers. Pull the power supply straight out of the system. There's two pins that you can't see under this side. So as you pull up, you'll notice that they're tightly inserted. Here's what it looks like after you pull it out. So as you pull up on the side where those pins are, you'll feel how tightly inserted they are. But just continue to pull straight up and they'll eventually slide out. If you're finding this video helpful so far, feel free to hit the like button. With the power supply out, you can now clean any dust that has accumulated inside of it. Just blow into it. Next, disconnect these five things. These three are ribbon cables. The two white ones have little handles on them, so you can just pull up on the handle and they'll come out. The brown one doesn't have a handle, so you'll just have to pinch it with your two fingers and pull it out. Unsnap these two connectors from the board. Try your best to do it with your fingers. If that doesn't work, pry them off with something plastic. You don't want to use metal because it may scratch the board. And then when they're loose, untuck the wires. Next, you have to remove the disk drive. Remove the one screw that's holding it in. And on the other side, pop out the panel that has the eject and power buttons on it. There is a ribbon cable attached to the bottom, so don't yank the whole thing out. For now, just lay the panel to the side. Next, you need to pull up on the disk drive and remove it, but on some variations, there's a very short ribbon cable underneath it. Mine has one, and it's hard to get a good look at it, but it's right here. 
Here's what it looks like after it's been disconnected. If yours has one, hold the drive up with one hand and place your other hand underneath to pull the ribbon out of the connector. If your hand is a lot bigger than mine, you may want to find someone with smaller hands to do this step. Or perhaps you can stick some needle nose pliers underneath and pull the cable out that way. Now it's possible during the process of this video that I omit something or say something that's incorrect. If so, I'll add a clarification to the description of this video. So I advise you go down and look at the description of the video just to make sure I didn't add something already. Disconnect the button panel cable from the board. Then loosen up these two wires some more. Next, remove these five screws. Then lift the entire metal case out of the system. Then flip it around so that you can remove, you guessed it, more screws. This time there's nine of them. Four of them hold in these heat sink clamps. So when you take those clamps out, I recommend leaving the screws in them so you know which direction the clamps face when you put it back together. With the screws removed, you can now remove half of the metal. The final step would be to remove the board from the other half of the metal. But here you have to be very careful. There are ports on the side of the board that go through the metal, so you need to make sure you're pulling those out through the metal as you're pulling it apart. Also, there is thermal paste between the board and the metal, so if that has dried up, it may have become glue-like, so pulling up the board from one spot might break the board. You may have better luck if you apply heat to the middle of the board. The best approach is to lightly pry each side of the board to loosen its grip. So there's the CPU and the GPU. Not long ago, I replaced the existing thermal paste. So what you're seeing here is the result of that work. Here's what the original paste looked like. It was still liquidy, but it didn't cover the entirety of the chip's surfaces. I cleaned it off and replaced it, making sure that it did cover the entire surface. Some people go a step further and do a process called de-litting. It's a complex and risky operation and the necessity of doing it on a PS3 Slim is up for debate. I won't be covering that process in this video, but if you're curious, go ahead and search YouTube on how to do it. If you're wanting to replace your battery, it's easy to do it at this point. Just pop the old one out and pop the new one in. This is also the best time to remove dust from all the various components. Here's how to put everything back together. Take the metal panel that has the fan on it and slip it onto the board, being mindful of the ports that are on the side. Then place the other metal panel back on and put the nine screws back into it. There's little arrows on the metal to indicate where the screws go. Place the metal box into the bottom half of the console shell. Then replace these five screws. These two are silver and the rest are black. Reattach the ribbon cable that goes to the button panel. Reattach the black and white wires. They won't snap back on unless you position them perfectly. The black one snaps into the spot that's closest to the fan. Snake the wires through all the notches. For me, the black one didn't have enough slack to go around all those notches, so I just did a few of the notches. If you have a ribbon cable that comes out of the bottom of the CD drive, you will now encounter the hardest part of the whole process. Getting that ribbon reconnected is very tough due to how short it is. I did it by sticking my hand under the drive and using my fingers to put the ribbon into the connector. This took quite a while to do. You may be able to use needle nose pliers to do the same thing. Place the button panel back into position. 
make sure the drive is properly positioned. You should feel it drop into place when you get it just right. Then put the one screw that was holding it back in. Then reconnect the three ribbon cables here. Next, put the power supply back on. You don't want to bend those pins, so just make sure they're lined up with the two holes. Reconnect the ribbon cable here. And then the big one on the other side. And then the small one that's over here. Screw the two power supply screws back in. Then put the top back on. Put the hard drive back in. Notice the way the plastic is cut. The blade of metal slips right into it. Push the handlebars down and slide the cover back on. Then replace all the screws on the back. Did you know you can play a PS3 using a PS5 DualSense controller? There's a few drawbacks. I go over the setup process and those drawbacks in the video that's on the screen right now. Have a good day everybody.